Okay, so welcome to this first video on the uh, Poisson distribution. Okay, so um, in this first video, what I'm going to do is set up the Poisson distribution as a, a probability distribution on the uh, on a set of real numbers. Uh, and in the next video, what we'll do is we'll find an abstract probability space uh, which has a random variable mapping it onto this uh, standard Poisson distribution in the real numbers. Okay, uh, so the Poisson distribution. And it's a discrete distribution, so it's acting on a count of the... In well, it's, uh, its sample space is a count of the infinite number of real numbers, and in fact is all, uh, all non-negative integers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Okay, uh, so now what we want to know is what is the PMF of this uh, Poisson distribution. Uh, so the PMF of the Poisson distribution uh, is given by the probability, uh, well, it's given by, uh, uh, I shouldn't probably write, I, I would usually obviously write a PMF like the probability that x is equal to little x, but of course the big x uh, is the random variable, so I shouldn't uh, write it like that. Instead I should probably write um, the probability of a um, singleton uh, event, uh, so a uh, the probability of an event containing just a single outcome i is equal to e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i over i factorial. Okay, uh, so that is our that is our that completely determines the probability distribution. Now, I have told you the probability of uh, if you stick every outcome in a set by itself and call that an event and ascribe a probability to it. This is the probability I want you to ascribe to it. So remember, uh, a probability space has the form of a sample a sample space, which is these numbers zero to n. Then it has a set of events, and now I'm saying in the set of events, uh, make i an element of uh, this set of events for all i is an element of the sample space and then you have a probability measure p which maps every element of uh, the set of events onto a number between 0 and 1 so an element of the interval 0 and 1 and these obey a lot of axioms uh, so what we want to do is make sure that this is a valid PMF and the first thing that we need to check is that uh, if we sum all of this up uh, well. The first thing we need to check is that the probability of the entire sample space, so the entire sample space, remember, is always an event. Uh, so uh, that's one of the basic axioms of this being a, uh, a sigma algebra of subsets of the sample space. Okay, so we can ascribe a probability to that, and that should be equal to 1. Uh, but uh, the probability of um, this whole sample space, you could write this as the probability of the union, disjoint union, i is equal to 0 to infinity of the sets containing the single outcome i. And now, by axiom 2 of uh, probability measures, uh, this is count of the additive, so this should be equal to the sum, i is equal to 0 to infinity of the probability of the singleton. So, we know, I have told you the PMF of this uh, probability distribution, it's up here. So, I can uh, replace the probability of this um, single contain containing i with what it actually is equal to, and this is equal to the sum i is equal to zero uh, to infinity of e to the negative lambda, lambda to the i over i factorial. Okay. Uh, we can pull out the e to the negative lambda, so this is e to the negative lambda of the sum i is equal to 0 to infinity of lambda to the i over i factorial. And this, if we write a few terms of this out, you should see what it is, e to the negative lambda, and then let's write a few terms of this out. So the first term is i is equal to 0, so you get lambda to the 0, which is 1, over uh, 0 factorial, which is 1, so you get 1 plus the next term, which is i is equal to 1, which is plus lambda over 1 factorial, which is 1. So you get plus lambda. Then the next term, which is plus lambda to the power of 2, so lambda squared over 2 factorial. And then we go on, lambda to the 3 over 3 factorial, plus lambda to the 4 over 4 factorial. And this is exactly the Taylor expansion for e to the power of a lambda, and it is valid uh, for absolutely all values of lambda uh, is an element of the real numbers. Okay, uh, so we get e to the negative lambda times e to the lambda, so e to the negative lambda times e to the lambda, 
uh, is equal to 1. So we find that indeed the probability of the entire sample space happening is indeed equal to 1. If uh, you set uh, the PMF equal to this. So this is a valid PMF. Uh, so you can use this to make a probability distribution on, on this uh, sample space uh, which uh, satisfies the axioms of a probability space. So basically the way you do that is uh, here's your sample space. Uh, you let the set of all events, you set, let the set of events be equal to the power set of uh, the sample space and then you let the probability of any subset, uh, so let's say, uh, let's go down here, uh, let's say E is an element of the power set of the sample space, uh, then you'd let uh, the probability of E be equal to uh, the probability, well first you'd write E is equal to uh, the union uh, of, uh, well, of over, uh, let's say X is an element of E, uh, the singleton containing the element outcome x. So uh, look at the uh, look at the if this is our sample space, uh, then you look at e here. So this is e, and you'd say uh, let's uh, let's look at every single element x, which is an element of e. And uh, if it is an element of x, uh, then we can say that e is the union of all of those um, events containing the singleton containing every single every possible outcome that is in the event. So basically, all you're doing is saying uh, let's build e out of the uh, singleton sets containing uh, the outcomes uh, that are in e. Okay, and then if we want our if if there's any hope of our probability of this function p being a probability measure, then P of E better well be the sum of X as an element of E times these probability of these singletons. And uh, so that validly defines uh, a, a probability measure, providing that the sum uh, of all of these probabilities is equal to 1, which we've just shown that it is. So uh, that gives us the correct result for the overall um, for the overall um, sample space. Uh, so that makes it means that it, uh, it also obeys axiom 1 of uh, a probability measure. Okay, so now the next, last thing we want to be able to do in this video is we want to be able to find the expected value, uh, expected value of this um, probability distribution, expected value. I keep on, obviously usually when we're talking about things like this we would write E of big X again, uh, but that's not strictly true here because X is the random variable, X is the random, is the function mapping our abstract probability space onto this standard probability space. In this case, the standard probability space we're just studying in its own right. We're saying we're going to let the outcomes be real numbers. Um, so we are just studying the standard probability space. The reason you usually write E of X is because uh, for the same reason uh, that when we have a function mapping, let's say, um, uh, the real numbers onto the real numbers, let's say, uh, it, it, from calculus class, we would have a uh, function mapping real numbers onto real numbers. Uh, you would you would write the image of a point here. So let's say X is a point of this uh, domain. You'd write the image of it as F of X and you'd call that point f of x. Uh, so in the same way, you're really saying e of x of s. So you're using x of s to denote the elements of uh, this standard probability space. So that's why you usually write that. But we can work out the expected value of this probability space, uh, whether or not there is a random variable mapping, it, uh, mapping an abstract probability space onto it or not. So the expected value is going to be, uh, the, is going to be equal to the sum over x is equal to 0 to infinity of x times the probability of that singleton x happening. Okay, so every possible value that it can take uh, times the probability that that singleton does happen. And of course, this only work, this, uh, this formula for expected value only works for uh, a discrete standard probability space. Okay, uh, so uh, if we plug in this formula here, uh, we will plug in uh, what... Um, probability of the singleton is, which is x is equal to 0 to infinity uh, of x e to the negative lambda, lambda to the x over x factorial. Okay, uh, so the first thing to note here is that um, if, if, um, if x is equal to 0, then the sum, then this term is 0, because you're multiplying 0 by something that is equal to 1. Uh, so you'll get 0. So we might as well just take this sum from x is equal to 1. Uh, to infinity uh, of um, 
e to the negative of x times e to the negative lambda lambda to the x over x factorial. So that simplifies things. So let me just get another piece of paper. Okay. Okay, so the next thing to note is that the x will cancel with the x factorial down here because x is not equal to zero here, so that's fine. Uh, so uh, we will get uh, is equal to the sum from x is equal to 1 to infinity of e to the negative lambda, lambda to the x over um, x minus 1 uh, factorial. Now, again, we can pull out the e to the negative lambda because that's not part of the sum. x is equal to 1 to infinity of lambda to the x over x minus 1 uh, factorial. Now, if we write out what this is, it's going to be equal to e to the negative lambda of, uh, if we put in x is equal to 1, we'll get lambda up there, we'll get 1 minus 1 here, which is 0, so we'll get over 1. Then we'll get plus, uh, if x is equal to 2, we'll get lambda squared over 2 minus 1, which is 1 factorial, plus lambda cubed over, uh, which is x is equal to 3, over 2 factorial, etc., plus lambda to the 4 over 3 factorial. So, if we pulled out a lambda from this, we would get 1 plus lambda over 1 factorial plus lambda squared over 2 factorial plus lambda cubed over 3 factorial, etc. I.e., we would get the Taylor expansion of e to the lambda. Uh, so, this would cancel with this, and you will get the expected value of a, uh, of a, um, of a standard Poisson distribution is lambda. And lambda is just the parameter of the Poisson distribution. We will see how it's important later. But at the moment, you can just think of it as being some real number which you set. And it does not matter what that real number is. As we've shown, that uh, if you can let it be any real number you like, and you will still get a valid PMS.